What is happening, guys? Welcome back. Continuing on after Lady Butterfly. And there's a couple things we're going to get before we continue. Start, head on over to the gate path. This one, actually, shout out to the community. An item that I had missed in my prep work. I knew there would probably be one or two. This one was a sneaky little bugger, so we're going to go grab it right now. But remember this cliff from earlier. If you look all the way down there ledge that we can jump to. Hidden in the back is a Jizo statue. So you can actually get this uh, back when we make our way over here to go when we jump down and we get the sugar. You're, you know, watching these after the fact. But anyway, uh, after that, well, you know, I'll just do this faster anyway. Uh, after that, we're going to be making our way back over to the Black Hat Badger. We have a fair amount of gold after completing the last area. And before we go to Senpo Temple, we're going to want to get Ant here Deathblow. Head and travel to the old grave idol. Drop on down. Yep. So if you didn't pick up uh, Iron Fortress, once again, I would highly suggest getting this now. Um, just to briefly discuss the other two items he has. Uh, Yashiriku Sugar. Really, really interesting here. It cuts your health in half, uh, as well as your posture, but you get, when it says a large attack boost, this thing makes you beefy. Um, there are very limited uses for it, unless you're super confident in your ability to deflect. But when I say say beefy, I mean like you are going to smash whatever you attack while you have this up. As for Bite Down, Bite Down is a little bit more niche in usage. <clears throat> uh, bite Down essentially allows you to die, but Resurrection is not limited after use. So one of the best ways to use this, and in my opinion, probably the only real way to use this thing, is uh, if you're up against a boss, and let's say you have multiple Resurrections available, but you're not close enough to where you can get a Death Blow to clear the debuff you can basically pop Bite Down in that boss fight to kill yourself, resurrect, do more damage to the boss. Uh, so that's essentially the best use for it, because typically if you would die to the boss, you get that uh, Black Slash through your resurrections. With Bite Down, that won't actually occur, so you're able to you know, basically uh, kill yourself while you're low, come back with half your health, fight the boss, and then die, and then res again. Uh, but anyway on the point let's hop back to the last commune idol and now we're gonna make our way on out to Sempo Temple Sempo Temple is a pretty interesting area uh, it's very very easy to get overwhelmed so but, uh, you know just have your wits about you but anyway travel go Ashina outskirts and the abandoned dungeon entrance Actually, not the abandoned dungeon entrance. We want the other dungeon that's deeper in. My mistake. But we can just run there real fast. It's it's literally like around the corner, so we'll just shoot on over. Which actually, this is probably ideal because we can swing back by and check in our merchant friend. <laughs> And boom, lump of fat wax. Three, in fact. So if you look, you can see Samurai Bro kind of back in there. Uh, he's basically a zombie. I don't know what they've done to him exactly, but... Anyway, uh, we're going to continue this quest line a little bit later. For now, just ignore these things and run on fast. So we're going to swim through the water. A couple different things you can pick up. The coins, which we got earlier. Uh, there's also a pacifying powder, sugar, and some gunpowder. God, I love heal on death blow. Anyway, pick up our loot, some coins, gunpowder, pacifying agent. And there's the Akko Sugar. 
Uh, we're gonna jump back into the water, continue swimming. Ignore these fish. Those two guys. Zip around the corner and pop the mechanism. Graves of those who were lost. I know you want to, but you can't break the pots. So this sounds really ominous, you know, you should be captured, there's no telling what will become of you. <laughs> you don't need to actually worry about it. Uh, my first time here, I thought it was going to be something similar to the Hippogene Jail in Bloodborne. It's not. She's just saying, you know, stuff here is spooky. Watch out. Uh, and before we actually get started in this area, let's do a quick skill update. So if you've been following along, you should easily have Makiri Counter by now. You should also have Midair Deflect. Uh, and you should have worked your way towards Breath of Life Flight. Especially in this area, which is very enemy heavy, uh, the skill is going to become invaluable. Moving on into the Ashina Arts, Ichi Minoji. If you have enough, get the double. Of course, Descending Carp, Ascending Carp, and Flowing Water, I would all consider necessary, so get those. After that, things open up and you can really go wherever you want. Um, looking at this tree in particular, I'm probably going to be working towards getting uh, Shinobi Eyes next, which I find to be really useful. But after, immediately after that, I'm going to end up uh, working through the Prosthetic Arch Tree, just because a lot of these skills are really, really nice to pick up. So first thing we're going to do, pray for my safety, uh, first thing we're going to do is head on left to get ourselves a sugar. We're going to go around to the right, drop down, back up here, grab some scrap iron. This is big boy. He's nice. I want to talk to him. His friends left him here all alone. They left, leaving poor Aro behind. Ask him why he's crying. He says everyone's gone and he's sad. They all left him alone. The spinning red and white flowers. There's only one pure white flower. He can't find it. You ask what? His head hurts. Anyway. Uh, for now, we can't do anything. But this quest has two different outcomes. The first is giving him the white flower. In which case, afterwards, you need to spirit him away. And then when you find him again, he will give you a rare persimmon. Uh, the persimmon can be given to the divine child, which we'll meet a little bit later, to get rice when she gets exhausted. Uh, the alternative, which I would highly recommend, is giving him the red and white pinwheel, and then after that, he says, you're trying to help, and you can pick where to send him, and we can send him to the merchant that was selling stuff for us back at Ashina. Um, because of that, the merchant gets a, a very nicely upgraded inventory, which is why I so heavily suggest doing that as opposed to completing his quest. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna aerial our monk friend here. And we're gonna jump down here. Now, you may think this looks a little funny. You know, there's a kite, there's a guy right here. Just kill this guy for now. Uh, this is a quest which will later be used to get the serpent. You gotta fly the kite on out. We can't, I mean, you can fly it right now, but it doesn't do anything. So for the time being, I would suggest just ignoring it. But turn back around here and pick this up. Notch and sugar, get the balloon. Then we head back up. Uh, so before we go much further, I want to talk about the monks in this area. The monks aren't particularly difficult in a 1v1 scenario, but it is very, very easy for them to outnumber and overwhelm you. So because of that, there are a ton of uh, various rope points around here. I would highly suggest you make use of them. To 
can see one on one they're not bad you know they're a little bit more resilient than the than the uh, the regular swords when we've been killing up until now uh, but one thing I really want to point out about these monks is as you're seeing here we can deflect their attacks and up until now you know you're used to only deflecting sword attacks and what's interesting about the monks is it shows you you can inflect uh, <laughs> inflect you can in fact deflect melee blows as well which is really important because there's going to be a lot of melee oriented enemies later on and uh, you know I see a lot of people try to fight them via dodging which just isn't good uh, so these staff guys they tend to do a thrust attack if you let them get it off just Makiri counter um, anyway we're gonna swing through this gate and then jump back up get ourselves this light purse now we're gonna chill here for a second because we have three monks there we have three monks there and we have uh, more monks up there so we're just gonna let these guys we're gonna basically lure them out separate them a little bit you know they know someone's over here they're looking they're looking they're looking but it's too late One thing I want to put a uh, mention to as well is you're noticing that you are I'm, I'm able to fight multiple enemies at the same time and all you have to do you don't need to you just literally uh, tap your right stick left or right depending on which one you're trying to fight and it'll just move for you so it's very easy and fluid to fight multiple enemies if you get overwhelmed but just keep in mind you know two or three is one thing trying to fight uh, you know six or more <laughs> things get a little bit more intense but anyway we're gonna clear these guys out before we go ahead and start picking up loots it's like I pissed them all off which is fine you have a ton of different rope points in this area so it's really easy to, to just kind of jump around and actually we'll go ahead and start picking stuff up now so we have heavy coin purse first and right down from here Get the antidote powder and the light coin purse. Let's we'll cheer here at the cheeky for a second. Actually, grab the other antidote powder real fast. There we go. Now they're showing up. Ooh. Missed my theory there. Just to check my, my notes here, um, let's see. Whirlwind Slash works pretty well here. Fireworks can help a little bit if you're getting overwhelmed. Um, let's see, Light Purse, Balloon, Pellet and Pacifying, Sugar in the middle, Heavy Purse off to the right, Light and two, okay. So we'll go over and grab the rest of the loot since I already started grabbing loots. And also stealth a fair amount through this area. We have the uh, the high grass. If you're looking for ideal targets, I would suggest taking out the guys with the staffs first. They are without question the bigger threat out of uh, everything else that's here. Oh! Sweet. Next, as I mentioned, aside from breaking shields, also a great tool when you need to just blow through something's posture. Once again, you'll notice what I'm doing is as I'm fighting, I'm quickly swapping back and forth between enemies to just keep pressure on both. Grab the Akko Sugar. And over here. Oh. Hell it. And I think I'm missing. Let's see here. We got the pellet. We got the sugar. Get the pacifying. Over here. We didn't get the pacifying, though, I don't believe. That was the pacifying. 
My notes I wrote down, we're going to left his pellet and pacifying sugar in the middle, heavy purse off to the right, drop down for light purse and two antidotes. So yeah, that does sound right. I think we did get everything. All right, anyway, so with all of them dispatched, just full of ash, on up here. Pick up the other Akko sugar. Notice these guys just poop out resurrective power. Nice little point if you ever need it for whatever reason. Alright, so next we're gonna stop that. Turn around. Go on and kill this one first. Before you do anything else. These guys won't immediately notice you. Don't grab that. Go over here. Take out big boy. Bat wax. Um, I would highly suggest putting on whirlwind slash real fast. I'm going to open on all three of these monks at the same time. see how easy that was. Just two whirlwind slashes and they were taken out. Now, this thing can't actually kill it right now. I mean, you can, but it just keeps coming back. So instead, just go ahead, pick up the gourd seed, walk away. Didn't even come alive. Come on. At least come alive so people can see what you do. There we go. Uh, so there's two variations of these. This one likes to vomit out crickets. The second one has a giant centipede that pops out of it, but like I said, you can't permanently kill them right now, even with fire, so it's better to just, you know, leave them for the time being. I mean, they, they don't move, they just sit there, so you know, not a giant concern. Hop out and talk to this lady. She's going to talk about some serpent fruit, some blah, blah, blah. Uh, the basic idea here is there's two of these old ladies, and they guide you to the serpent visceras, which you're going to need for one of the endings. However, you have me to guide you to the Super Visceros, and I promise I'm a lot more comprehensive than this crazy old lady who demands rice before she helps you. So anyway, that's what her dialogue relates to. Go back here, grab a balloon. Wants rice. She's like, give me the rice! Um, let me check here. Balloon, rope up to the tree for a light purse. Oh, remember that kite from earlier? Doesn't this look strangely like if there was something right here you could jump this gap? That's right. But, as I mentioned, we can't do the kite just yet. But when we are able to do the kite, this is where we come back and we'll launch on over there. So anyway, uh, after that, down from tree are two monks and sugar. You can see the first monk right there. There we go. Got a little close for a second. Okay, now we're going to go back over to smaller tree. It's more of a stump, I should say. Here, I have some spirit emblems and get the antidote powder. Um. Yes, alright, so from here we're just going to haul ass to the new idol. Uh, we are going to fight past this stuff, but there's an idol literally right up ahead, so it would be kind of dumb to not get it. Uh, so instead, on this way. Well then, go ahead and pick up the pellet. get my ink just right. There we go. Go here. We don't need to uh, to fully rest yet. Though actually, you know what? We will, just to get back all of our gourd. 
necessarily hurt. Uh, so we're going to go back and fight these guys just to, to kind of introduce them because we'll find more of them later and they're pretty irritating. Uh, so go ahead, jump down, death blow. As you can probably guess, break the shield, bro. Alright, now up above are these guys that use uh, basically dual bladed, like twin blades. Um, they can be very deadly if you're not careful. The best way to fight them, every time they jump, hit them with a shuriken. As long as you do that, they're not nearly as much of a threat. They are still rather annoying. Since there's two of them here, you can already kind of see why I recommend it. It's better to just run past this area. So, um, you know, if you really want to kill them, feel free to. As I said, it's, it's uh, you know, they're basically just huge assholes. And this early on, I don't really think they're worth doing. But if you absolutely insist on fighting them, the best strategy is going to be to shuriken them anytime you jump. Or if you have some really good timing. We just picked up anti-air death blow. Uh, the skill is kind of tricky to use. The basic gist here is you need to jump up at an enemy and tap right bumper while they're in the air, and you can instantly death blow and kill them. Uh, you can do it against these guys, but the timing for it is pretty tight, and you have to do it during like an actual jump, not just a flip. So because of that, I think it's better to just avoid them. Honestly, the experience they drop isn't anything to really write home about. So anyway, just skip them for now. Instead, head this way, and then we're going to hop over to the left here first. Oh, whoa, 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 don't be doing that. Pick up the ceramic shard, and say hello to a new merchant, the Shugendo Memorial Merchant. So this guy sells persimmons. Um, persimmons are really nice to pick up. I would not suggest using them, however. I mean, you can, you know, it allows you to get posture damage back, uh, but... You need these for the uh, Divine Child. If you insist on using them, there's one we can pick up later. So you can use these two, but don't use the other two. Uh, five Color Rice. I picked this up on my Let's Play. Little did I know, it's basically just a glorified Prism Stone. Uh, it doesn't do anything. Quite literally how it says. Five Colored Rice used by Shinobi as landmarks. Uh, you can drop this on the ground and it just creates a glowing area so you know where you've been. Um, the biggest thing about this guy is quite a few coin purses. So... If you're getting nice and filled up on gold, go ahead and pick up those purses. Save yourself some heartache later. He also has upgrade mats with the scrap magnetite, but we're going to be getting plenty of that later, so nothing to really worry about. Uh, there's nothing over here, as you can see, but I want to point this area out just because it does offer some beautiful screenshots. If you're looking for a nice uh, desktop background or something like that, just a really nice view from over here. But anyway... We're going to continue on a little bit more. Let me scroll my notes here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we'll get up to him first. Let me go ahead and take this off. Don't want to accidentally use it. Since we died fighting the spinny winny twirly boys, let's go ahead and get back our resurrective power. I also want to point out that any time you die, the first resurrective power that you lose is going to be the one from resting at an idol. The second resurrective power, the one that looks like a lotus petal, uh, that is the one that will fill up from us killing enemies. So when we were killing those crickets and we had uh, that kind of pink red stuff coming at us, that's resurrective power. That's what will fill up those nodes if they end up being empty. So anyway, um, let's see. We're going to go... A couple different approaches to this area, but we're going to take the uh, sneakiest one. So, go on and pick up the Mibi Balloon. Jump up. Go very, very slow. There's an enemy right here, you can see. And it, as long as you're slow, you can trigger him to fall down, but he won't actually notice you. You can get the death blow. Next. Go on. Kill number two. Also a sugar here. Um, let's see. Rope and aerial three. Ledge for number four. I want to go over to there. Gremlin three. Gremlin four. Jump and grab. Beautiful. 
beautiful, right? So anyway, uh, with all of them down, let's see. Up the warrior. Yes. Okay. Um, so we're going to be going up there to fight a boss, but before that, we're going to be uh, making our way over to there. So see the hook point right there. It's a little finicky, but once you jump for it, it should show up. Oh, no. If you whiff the grab, make sure to heal. As I mentioned, if you die from a fall. Oh, God. Oh, ah, my God. So this is a little bit tricky because you need to, like, orient yourself so that you're more facing the wall to grab. As you can see, it's it's not not easy. Um, but anytime you're falling, heal on up. Because like I said, if you if you die from a fall, there is no res. You don't come back. Oh my god, this is irritating. Um, let's see. There we go. God. Very finicky jump. Thankfully, you know, we were able to stealth the other guy, so you should have plenty of, uh, of heals. So get this heavy purse. Next, where is it at? Ah, damn it. Still haven't patched this area. So I had this same exact problem with this particular jump uh, in the Let's Play. For whatever reason, it's a little bit finicky here. As you're noticing there, the frames probably slowed down, even though the rest of this Let's Play has been very smooth. Um, I don't know what exactly causes it, but I do hope they patch it, because it makes that jump kind of tricky to get. Go up here. The lizard that dropped down, or a gecko, whatever you want to call it. You don't got to really worry about it. Here we have the white pinwheel. So if you have been looking for the white pinwheel for the quest, this is where you get it. Also, go on up. Bad gecko. And a little bit more. You can also rope your way up here. There's a couple different approaches. It's, you know, it's very much uh, go up however you want. Grab the monkey booze. Grab the heavy coin purse. There's a dude inside here. Uh, baby centipede. They're pretty easy to kill. until you get on the ground, jump, and just death blow. I don't know why that works, but these guys are just vulnerable to death blows from above, so you can always uh, instant clap them like that. Uh, now, right here we have a hidden wall. I'm going to show this real fast. We're not going to do this fight yet, but when it is time to come back and do this fight, go straight through here. And we're back at Headless. Like I said, we're not going to do this just yet. I mean, you could, uh, as I mentioned before, you get a reusable Akko Sugar from doing this. Um, because that fight requires you to have Divine Confetti, there's a couple different things that we're going to aim to get before we do the fight, just to make sure that it's a one-and-done encounter, because we have, early on in the game at least, we have limited Divine Confetti available. So when you pop it for the fight, you want to make sure that you're getting that kill. Here we are at the Bell Demon's Temple, and I can't believe I forgot to use the Butterfly Memory. I've been going along weaker than I could have been. Uh, so the last thing we're going to touch on before we continue here is the bell. Do not ring this bell. Inviting misfortune is an act of virtue, but only the stoutest of hearts should even consider it. So, if you do ring the bell... Bong! Sinister Burden, which isn't nearly as ominous as it sounds. Uh, we now have the Bell Demon, demonic spirit sealed within the Iron Bell of Senpo Temple, possessing those who ring the bell, strengthening enemies around them. The Bell Demon confers hardship, but perhaps also slightly better spoils. Using this item has no particular effect aside from causing the demon to leave. So basically, if you're ever at a time where you need to farm, and I mean farm hard for items, uh, in particular upgrade materials, come to the bell, get the bell. Um, but other than that, you can just uh, go to inventory, go right here, 
use. Bell Demon's gone. That easy. Uh, so anyway, we're going to wrap things up here. In the next episode, we are going to be tackling a boss to start things off, and then the majority of this area. So make sure to stay tuned, and I'll see you guys then with more of the walkthrough.